Serving static assets in a Django application. How do we do this in production? In this video, we're gonna look at a Django package that makes it very easy to serve your static assets from your Django web application in a performant manner. And that package is called white noise. Now the common wisdom in the past has been that in production, you should serve your static assets using a reverse proxy like Nginx or from a centralized location like Amazon S3. White Noise offers an alternative that's very easy to configure and it can be combined with CDNs to make things very efficient and performant. So let's get started. Before we do, if you want to support our channel, check out the Bug Bites coffee page. And thank you very much to everybody who has donated on this page. Now let's look at the White Noise documentation to start with. So White Noise provides radically simplified static file serving for Python web applications. And with only a couple of lines of config, White Noise will allow your web application to serve its own static files and that makes it a self-contained unit that can be deployed anywhere without relying on Nginx or any other external service, for example, S3. Now this is especially useful on platform as a service providers such as Heroku. And if we go to the documentation for Heroku, for Django and static assets, you can see there's a section here on White Noise. So this package will work with Heroku and it also works with other platform as a services such as Render. So for deploying a Django web application to render, if we click the setup static file serving on the right hand side, you can see that white noise is used to serve these static assets from the render web server. So it's important to know a bit about white noise if you're planning to deploy your Django app using a service such as those. And white noise is designed to work nicely with a CDN for high traffic sites, so you don't have to sacrifice performance to benefit from this simplicity. Now the best practices that white noise takes care of are listed here, for example, serving compressed content, and you can compress your static assets using gzip and broadly. And white noise will also handle these HTTP headers for you, so you don't need to worry about those. And white noise will also set far future cache headers on content that's not going to change. And that's gonna improve performance on your browser when you send requests. Unless there's been a change to the underlying static assets, your browser can use the cache and that's gonna improve performance. Let's get started now with the installation. I'm gonna copy the pip install command and I'm gonna open up VS Code here. I have a sample Django application and this is a very basic app, basically the one you get when you execute the start project command. So let's paste that in there and it's gonna install white noise into the virtual environment. Now once that's installed, what I want to do is go back to the white noise documentation. So let's go back to the browser and there's a quick start here for Django applications. Now before we get started with this, I want to cover some aspects of static file serving in Django. Now the way that these are served typically depends on your environment, for example, development versus production. So in development, Django's built-in web server can serve static files as long as debug is set to true. So if we go to settings.py in this Django application, you can see that by default debug is set to true and that's what you want during development. And as long as that's true, then the static files application that's part of the default installed apps list, that is actually gonna override the built-in run server command. So when you run the run server command and static files as part of installed apps, it's gonna provide its own alternative to that. We'll look at that later in the video. And all we need to do is define two settings, the static URL and the static files directories. So at the moment, if we run the run server command, that is going to use a command provided by this that overrides the built-in one to serve the static assets. But Django is only gonna serve these static assets using the built-in web server if debug is set to true. Now in production, you can use a standard web server like Nginx or Apache to serve your static files from a particular location on your web server. Now Django's collect static management command is gonna find all of the static assets in your project and it's gonna collect them and gather them into the static root directory. So static root is another setting that you want to set when you're handling static files. Once the files have been collected into the static root, then the web server, whether it's Nginx or Apache, is gonna handle serving the files from that location. Now some modern ways of deploying Django to the cloud use these platform as a service approaches. And you might not have a lot of control over Nginx and Apache in those environments. And they might be difficult to configure and that's where white noise can help. And of course, in production, you're never gonna have debug set to true. It's always gonna be set to false, which means that the static files app is not gonna be able to serve these assets in production. And that's not something you would want to do anyway. So now that we've installed white noise, what I'm gonna do is go back to the quick start and white noise provides this middleware here. So let's copy this reference. And we want to add this above all other middleware apart from the security middleware. So let's go to the middleware setting that we have here. And just underneath the security middleware, we're gonna paste in the white noise middleware. Once we've done that, we have another step here and that's to set the storages option. So if you want forever cacheable files and also compression support, you can add this compressed manifest static file storage 
and that's going to be for the static files key and the storages option. So let's copy this and go back to our application. I'm going to go to the very bottom here and just underneath the static URL, I'm going to paste this in. So we've now set our static files backend to this compressed manifest static file storage from white noise. And while we're here, what we're going to do is set a couple of extra settings. The static root is going to be the base directory of the application. And then let's create a static files directory underneath that. And this directory here, the static files directory under the base directory, is what's expected by render, for example. So if we're back on the render documentation here, if we scroll down a little bit to step three here in settings.py, notice that this is the static root and it's being set to exactly the same directory here called static files. And this is something that's specific to render. Some other platforms might have different approaches for this, but static files is the one that we're going to use here as well. So let's go back to settings.py. Now, if we go back to the quick start on the white noise documentation, this is essentially all you need to get the support from white noise for serving these static assets and also getting caching and compression built in. If you want to go further, you can then set up CloudFront or other CDNs, and that's going to improve the performance by serving the static assets, not from the Django application, up from the CDN after those assets have initially been fetched and loaded into the CDN. Now, if we go to our application, let's go to the core application in this Django project. And notice we have a static directory here that contains styles.css, and we have a class here called important paragraph. And that just adds some font size and color options. Now, Django can load this by default because every application that's in your Django project, Django will look for a static directory under that application and it will be able to find any static assets under those locations. Now, if you want to configure additional directories, for example, in your root directory, you might have a static directory, then there's a setting for that. And that setting here, if we go back to settings.py, is static files underscore directories. And that's shortened to DIRS. And that's gonna be a list of different locations on your server that you want to also let Django look for static assets. So I just wanted to note that we're not gonna use that in this video, so I'm going to delete the static directory. What we're going to do is take this CSS file and we want to add it to a base template. So let's go to base.html. Now in Django, if you want to reference a static asset in a template, you need to load the static template tag. And for the CSS file in the head tag here, I'm going to paste in a line of code. So we have a link to load up some CSS. And notice the href here is using the static template tag. And what we provide there is some kind of reference that Django is going to be able to find in one of the static files directories. So it's CSS slash styles.css. And that corresponds to this here. We have a CSS directory and then a styles.css file within that. Now let's try this out. What I'm going to do is save base.html and we've got the server running at the bottom. Now, because we have debug set to true here, the Django run server command is actually going to serve the static assets. So we're going to need to change that if we want to let white noise do the serving in development. Now I'm going to load up the Django documentation on configuring static files. If we scroll down here to this section on serving, notice this paragraph here. So during development, if you use the static files app, the serving is going to be done automatically by run server when debug is set to true. And notice as well that that is grossly inefficient and probably insecure. So it's unsuitable for production. So if we look at our application here, we have a paragraph tag. And if we go to the index.html template here, it's using this class here, and that is applying the styles from our CSS file, which is here. So the color's green and the font size is 1.4 rem, but the serving of this file is still using Django and not white noise. So I'm gonna go back to the Django documentation and I'm gonna load this section of the static files page. And I'll leave a link to this below the video. And this is something I didn't actually know until recently. So the static files application has its own version of run server, and that overrides the core run server command if static files is installed. And what you can do is pass the dash dash no static option. And that's going to disable serving with the static files application entirely. So in order to use white noise here, we can go back to our application and on the terminal, we have a run server command. We can pass dash dash no static to that. And that's then going to disable static file serving from Django itself. And it's going to try and use white noise instead. Now, if we go back to the application and let's do a hard refresh here, notice that we still have those styles being applied. So it's still able to fetch that static file and use that. And this time it's using white noise to do so. Now let's go back to the terminal. What if we forget to use the no static option here? Well, white noise provides an alternative. So let's go to the white noise documentation. And here's a section on using white noise in development. It turns out that white noise provides an application here called run server no static. And you can add that to installed apps and that way you don't need to remember to pass the no static flag. So let's do that just now and go back to our settings.py. And all we need to do here is add that application to the top of installed apps. 
And that means that when we use the run server command, we no longer need to pass no static. We can just run this and it's going to use white noise in development as well. And that's beneficial as it points out here. If you use the normal Django run server, some of the improvements that white noise makes to static file handling will not be available in development. And it also opens up the possibility for differences in behavior between your different environments. So for that reason, it's a good idea to use white noise in development as well. So now that we've added that, if we go back to this and do a hard refresh, you can see again, we still get this paragraph with the styles from the CSS file and white noise is now serving these assets. Now let's finish by digging in a little bit to the behavior of this particular backend. So this is the compressed manifest static file storage backend provided by white noise. Let's go to the terminal and what I'm going to do here is run the collect static management command. And that's going to take all of your static assets from different locations and move them into the static root. And if we look at the sidebar here, notice the static files directory that's been created and all of our static assets, for example, from the Django admin, but also the ones that we configured are now available in this directory. Now, if we look at the files here, for example, this one here, it has a hash appended to the name of the file. And if we go to the admin files here, for example, we also have some compression going on. Some of these files have gzip extensions as well as the hash plus the hash and the gzip extension. So the hash is there for the purposes of caching these static assets on your browser. And the gzip is for compression of the assets. That's going to reduce the size and improve performance because it's less data that needs to be shipped over the network. And what we can do as well in this static files directory is we can look at the static files.json file. So let's open that just now. Now this file is basically a mapping. And if we look at one of these here, it maps the original file to the one that has the hash appended. Now I'm gonna search for the CSS file that we had and that was called styles.css. And we can see the original name here and it's mapped to the one that contains the hash. So that storage class from white noise is gonna use this behind the scenes. And it's basically gonna replace the raw path with the hashed counterpart. When that raw path is referenced in your templates, for example here, as you can see here, it's the CSS slash styles.css. So that manifest storage class is gonna look that up here. It's gonna find this key and it's then going to map that key to this particular value. Now what happens when the CSS file changes? Let's go to styles.css and I'm going to paste in some additional styles here. If we then go back to our terminal and rerun the collect static command, once that's completed, we can then go back to our static root directory. And if we look at the CSS directory here, notice we now have additional files appearing in this directory. Now because the asset changed, we have generated a new hash. And that's because this hash is actually computed from the contents of the CSS file itself. So what we had before was this one and we now have the second one here. And because it's above a certain size, it's also used some compression here and it's created the gzip extension. And finally, just to demonstrate the manifest, if we go back to this manifest here and it's called staticfiles.json, this has now been updated and it's pointing to the new hash in that CSS. Now the benefit of this is that any time a static file changes, a new hash will be generated and Django will know about that and it's going to replace that in the manifest. And that means a new file is going to be served to the browser. So if these files do not change in between requests, then the browser can use the cached version. Otherwise it can detect when certain files have changed and serve the new and fresh version of that static asset. So this setup that we have is now ready for Django to serve static assets using the white noise package. And we're nearly finished this video now. I want to note a couple of things before we do though. I'm going to go to this link here. It's about serving media files. Now white noise is not suitable for serving user uploaded media files. The reason for this is that it only checks for static files at startup. So any files that were added after your Django application starts are not going to be seen. And more importantly, serving user uploaded files from the same domain as your web app is a security risk. And in addition to that, using a local disk to store and serve your user media, it makes it harder to scale your application across multiple machines. So imagine your web application is doing really well, and maybe you have a setup on a single server, but that's no longer going to be sufficient. And you want to scale that across multiple machines. It's going to be a problem if all of your static files are located on a single server, because when you add new machines, they are not going to have access to that disk, presumably by default. So if you store things in a central location, for example, Amazon S3, then all of your different machines that are serving the Django application can all access that central location. That's a best practice for media files. Now, before we finish here, let's have a look at some settings that are provided by white noise. Now, the top one here is the white noise root. This is the path to a directory of files that will be served at the root of your application. And you don't want to use this for most of your static files because you're not going to benefit from cache versioning. 
or it can be convenient for files like robots.txt which you want to serve at a specific URL. If we scroll down there's some useful settings here, you can read through those, I'll leave a link just below the video. Here's a useful one, white noise max age. This is the time in seconds for which browsers and proxies should cache unversioned files. So versioned files are basically the ones that have the hash that we saw earlier on. These will be detected automatically and cached forever using that manifest storage class. But for unversioned assets, the default here is 60 and it's chosen to be short enough not to cause problems with stale versions, but long enough that if you're running white noise behind a CDN, that CDN will still take the majority of the strain during times of heavy load. And you can set different mappings here for MIME types, for example. And if you scroll down, another useful one here is skip compress extensions. These are file extensions that you want to skip when you're compressing the assets. And there's lots more here. If we scroll down a little bit further, here's another one here. This is about keeping only the hashed files, and that's going to only store files with hashed names in the static root. So by default, as we saw in VS Code, Django's hashed static file system will create two copies of each file in the static root. One has the original name, for example, app.js, and the other one will have the hash appended. And if you're using White Noise's compression backend, which we are, it's also going to create another two copies of each of these files using gzip and Brotly compression if you've installed the Brotly package. So that results in six output files for each input. So we can set this to true in order to only keep the hashed files. And a final setting I want to look at is white noise manifest strict. This defaults to true, but we can set it to false to prevent Django throwing an error if you reference a static file that doesn't exist in the manifest. So that's most of what I want to cover in this video. We've seen how to set up white noise. And the way we've got this set up should work if we're deploying Django to a platform as a service such as Heroku or Render or various other ones. I want to note at the end here that it's possible to use white noise with a CDN. That's a key part of the benefit of using white noise. And that's going to be much better for performance reasons because most of the requests for static assets can then be served from the CDN itself. So you can use something like Amazon CloudFront or Cloudflare if you want to put this stuff behind a CDN. Now if you're interested in an extension of this video to use a CDN, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see a Django app deployed that uses white noise to some kind of platform as a service, let me know in the comments as well. And if you have a particular platform in mind, just let me know in those comments and we can maybe consider some videos on that. But that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed it, check out our coffee page here. Thanks very much to everyone that's contributed to that. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.